हेलो एवरीवन सो केट आफ्टरनून सेशन फॉर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग वी हैव कंपाइल्ड क्वेश्चंस फॉर दैट आल्सो एंड यू कैन चेक आउट द लिंक दैट इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन टू सी ऑल दीज क्वेश्चंस एंड सॉल्यूशंस सो दीज आर मेमोरी बेस्ड क्वेश्चंस एंड एज वी आर गेटिंग मोर एंड मोर क्वेश्चन वी विल बी अपडेटिंग दिस डॉक्यूमेंट सो यू कैन चेक इट आउट एंड सो सम ऑफ दीज क्वेश्चन आर हेयर एंड लेट सी दीज so this first one it is asking for static and kinematic indeterminacy for this propped cantilever and they have given this inclined load so in that case we will have all the unknowns possible at both of these joints so for static indeterminacy we know we'll have three unknowns at the fixed support that is the reactions and moment and two unknowns at the hinge support that is these two reactions so we have five unknowns and we'll have three equilibrium equations so we get static indeterminacy as two and if we talk about kinematic indeterminacy so kinematic indeterminacy gives the degree of freedom so we know that in this structure only one movement is possible that is the rotation at this hinge so that is the only degree of freedom here so it becomes one so kinematic indeterminacy is one here then the next one here they asked for the runway length so they have given the runway length at sea level and they have asked for a place which is at 300 meter above mean sea level so we know we increase the runway length by 7% for every 300 meter so we just have to use i mean we just have to add this percentage of the length so based on that we get the length as 1605 meter then next one it's just about the dimension for dynamic viscosity so we just have to look at the formula this newton second per meter square and from that we can reach this result then the next one is just a standard relation between young's modulus shear modulus and poisson's ratio and then from maths so this is also factual question then maximum minima related question we can see this one here it says if error in measuring the radius of 5 cm circular rod was 0.2% and the cross sectional area of the rod is calculated then the error the percentage error in the computed area will be so they have given the radius and the error in radius so 0.2% error is there that means the term dr upon r this is 0.2% and we have to find the error in area so area we know it is given as pi r square and from that we can calculate this differential da is equal to 2 pi r dr and because we have to calculate the percentage error here so we can divide it by area so on right hand side also by pi r square so r will cancel out this pi will cancel out and we are left with 2 dr upon r and we know the value of dr upon r as 0.2% so this da upon a it will be 0.4% so that will be the resulting error in the area then this question related to the pre stress it says a pre tension member has a span of 15 meter then area cross sectional area it is given as 450 by 450 mm it has three steel tendons and area of these tendons is 200 mm square and these are straight and located at 125 mm from the bottom so on the length if we see so we have something like this and and at this 125 mm from bottom we have the we have these tendons so eccentricity we know we calculate from the neutral axis so we will need to find that out so here this total depth is 450 and from bottom the tendons are located at 125 mm so eccentricity will be 450 by 2 minus 125 so this distance here from neutral axis to the tendons so that comes as 100 mm then it has given some further information that stress in these tendons is 1500 mpa and pre stress is same in all the tendons modular ratio m is given as 
So we have to find out the average loss of pre-stress due to elastic deformation. Considering all three tendons, so we know this elastic shortening, it is given as MFC and we will need to because this question was for sequential ten tensioning. So these wires are tensioned one after the other one. So there will be some loss due to that. So here if we take one by one, so we have these three wires. So once we induce tension in the first one, there will be no tension in the second and third because they are not tensioned yet. Then in that step, there is no loss. Then if we talk about tensioning the second one, so when we tension the second one, there will be loss in the first one because the first tendon is already tensioned, whereas there will be no loss in the third one. And when we tension the third one, then there will be loss in the second one as well as in the first one. And for the simplicity, they gave that all these tendons are straight and at the same level. So we will need to calculate this stress FC only once. So that is given as P by A plus PE square by I. So all this data is given P if we calculate. So that can be calculated with the help of this given stress in the tendons and the area. So 1500 times times 200. So here it is already calculated. So I'll just so this is the basic idea here. So we can find out the force and eccentricity we calculated. So using these formula, we find this FC as 2.36 MPa. Now 2.36 we will get, I mean once we will get the loss of stress in tendon 1 when second tendon is tensioned, then we will get it two more times as MFC in first one and second one when the tendon 3 is tensioned. So we will be getting the same term MFC, same value three times. So MFC plus MFC plus MFC. So we need to find out the average. So we'll be dividing it by three. So that will simply become six into 2.36 times three divided by three. So six into 2.36 that is coming as 14.16 MPa. So that is the required answer here. Then we can see this question here. It says at a municipal handling facility, a 30 metric ton mixture of food waste, yard waste and paper waste is present. The moisture content of the mix is 10%. The ideal moisture content is to be 50%. Then the water that should be added to this mix is. So we just have to find out what is the additional amount of water that we should add to this mix. So initial moisture content is 10%. That means 90% would be the dry content. So if we calculate the dry weight, dry weight would simply be 0 0.9 times 30. That is the total weight here, 30 tons. So we find out that dry weight is 27 tons. Now, if we increase the moisture to 50%, that means if moisture is increased to 50%, then this dry weight would also be 50%. Now, given the dry weight of 27 ton and percentage of dry weight is 50%, then total weight we can find out as 27 divided by 0 0.5 or 54 ton. Now, once we know this increased total weight, so we can find out the weight of water that should be added. So increased total weight is 54 ton. That means 50% is water. So 27 ton would be the volume of water that has to be added to this mix. So these are some of the questions. You can check out the link that is given in the description and see the solution for all these questions. And if you know any further question, then you can tell us in the comments or you can send it on our personal mail also.